Hi, it's KCCK's Culture Crawl. I'm Dennis Green on Zoom today. Joining me remotely from his office at the University of Northern Iowa in Cedar Falls is Michael Conrad, uh, director of the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra and, well, and many other groups too. Mike, welcome. Nice to see you. Thanks. Great to see you too. Hey, before we talk about the Jazz Composers Orchestra, which has a gig coming up, uh, just let me say how much we are enjoying your trio album. Oh, We're thanks. Playing it a lot on the radio and uh, on Labor Day, I listened back to the broadcast of your set at the Jazz Festival and uh, just uh, uh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it all over again. That was uh, that was a that was a great set, and it is uh, a super uh, super disc. Congrats. Thank you. Yeah, it's a joy to play with those two. So at the other end of the spectrum, the big band is back in action. You've had a couple of outings this year, and uh, most of them have been kind of out of the Iowa City and Cedar Rapids area, but glad to see that you all are going to be bringing the Jazz Composers Orchestra to the James in a few weeks. Yeah, that's right. We played in uh, Des Moines for the first time in July at Noche. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. And then in August, we were in Davenport. Um, and there was kind of a Bix Spiderbeck tie in there, which was sort of cool. We were kind of closing out the Bix weekend um, right on the river there in Davenport. Uh, they have a really nice band shell. And we premiered a brand new arrangement of Davenport Blues by Bix, um, who's maybe the, the first Iowa jazz composer. Well, he, he would have to be. Right. Yeah. So I, when I was thinking about it, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. And there's this arrangement by this guy, Gates Thomas, who's who's in Davenport. Um, so he was there for the premiere. And, and that was a lot of fun. Oh, neat. Because I you, when we think of your jazz composers orchestra, we think about you. We think about Chris Mertz. We think about Bob Washett. But that is that is really cool that you're going back, you know, actually, like you said, to the very beginning of jazz in Iowa. Yeah, looking to try to broaden the scope of it as much as possible within our kind of stated mission, you know, and bring some other people in. Um, of course, I'm going to continue to write for the band and and use Chris and Bob's music and John Rapson and these people we love, but trying to open it up to other folks as well. Well, with that in mind, now we've talked before about the Jazz Composers Orchestra and we've talked around your mission, which is to do original work by uh, Iowa uh, Iowa and Iowa based composers and mentioned a few of kind of the usual suspects when you first started when you first came up with the idea of this and again this has been something that you've worked on off and on during your career you know Colossus was you know mainly original music with you and your uh, uh, fellow students at the time and then you brought that to Iowa and uh, now the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra um New music for big band is not something that we, you know, that you see every day. Most people, when they, when they think big band, they think of uh, standard charts from the swing era. So what is it about composing for big band today that makes it especially cool and fun to do? I think there's, there's still so much more to be explored in, in that setting, you know, um, especially with the, the modern conception of a big band, a jazz orchestra uh, and all of the doubles available and all of the kind of cross genre sort of things that are possible and that many people are doing. I mean, it's still, there's, you know, endless possibilities still exist uh, within that medium. So um, I'm constantly trying to push the boundaries of what I'm comfortable with there. And I think the band is excited about that too, not just, you know, we have kind of a core repertoire we've developed, but for pretty much every gig we've played, we're doing at least one thing that's new to us um, each time. And that keeps it fresh, that keeps it fun, keeps it challenging because we don't have a built-in rehearsal time with everybody kind of scattered around the state. So we're usually kind of putting things together at the sound checks sort of last minute and everyone's a great player, so it works, but uh, it keeps everyone kind of, um, keeps everyone on edge in a good way. As I said, you've done this before throughout your career, you know, composed and worked with uh, big bands for with new music, but every gig brings a surprise, something different. So think about particularly those gigs over this last year, uh, the 
the Bix connection is a great example. What other things uh, ended up being a little bit of a surprise or maybe, you know, something that you did not expect in uh, putting together the performance or the performance itself? Well, yeah, for that, uh, that gig in Davenport, whenever you're playing an outdoor concert, there's a little bit of, you know, you're kind of rolling the dice a bit. And that was a sweaty one. <laughs> so there were a few things with that. It was like um, we were soaking in, in our sweat by the end of just the sound check. Um, but also for that one, I almost didn't make it back. I was I was in Massachusetts teaching at a jazz camp um, that my friend Alexa Tarantino runs, the Cape Ann Jazz Workshop. And Alexa and I went to Eastman together and have been good friends. Ooh, ooh, nice name drop there, my friend Alexa Tarantino. Well done. I know. <laughs> I, I will for, forever be trying to connect myself to her because of how cool she is. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we've known each other for a long time and, and I've been teaching at her camp for a long time. Uh, and it was really fun to do that this summer, but I got stuck in Boston due to just a bunch of flight cancellations. And I, I almost didn't make it back. I made it to O'Hare and then my sister drove from the quad cities to O'Hare and, uh, right to Davenport to get me there in time for the gig. So I'm, uh, eternally gr grateful to my sister, Sheila, for, for doing that for me and getting me to the band on time. The, the, the gig happened because of Sheila more than anybody else. That's right. She made it happen. So, well, we mentioned, in a, again, uh, Bix, which is kind of a new addition to the repertoire. I mentioned, uh, of course, the great, uh, late, great John Rapson, uh, Chris Mertz, you, um, Bob Washett, uh, as uh, active Iowa composers, uh, who else can we expect to hear at your performance in October? Yeah, we've got a really fun chart, uh, a blues written by Ryan Kaiser, um, who grew up in Western Iowa and now has made quite the name for himself as, as the lead trumpet player in the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. Um, he has a tune called Effing Blues, and there's a great uh, Bob Washett arrangement of that. It's a blues in F. And it's a fun one to kind of like, we can open it up and feature a bunch of different people in the band. Everybody loves to play the blues. It's really fast and tricky. So it, it's kind of like a flashy thing too that people always, uh, audiences get really excited to hear it and the band loves playing it. So that's a fun addition. Uh, we've got a new piece from Chris, well, new to us anyway, which is something that comes from the quartet book, the uh, Christopher's Very Happy The Happy Band. band? Yeah, so it's one that he originally conceived for the small group. And then he opened uh, up for the big band and it's dedicated to Kenny Wheeler. It's called A Gentleman. Um, so it, it features a flugelhorn solo by Dave Rezik. And this will be our first time playing that one um, at this upcoming gig in Iowa City. You mentioned Dave Rezik. Uh, the band really is a literal who's who of the top players and educators, mainly from Eastern Iowa, but really from around the whole state. So run down the personnel list. Yeah, it really is uh, quite the band, and I, I'm always, I feel so lucky to be a part of it, to play with all these people. There's saxophones, Robert Espy, Jen Teedy, Chris Mertz, uh, Nolan Schrader normally plays with the band, Simon Harding, and I say Nor Nolan normally plays with the band because we've got a sub for him this time, he can't make this gig, but Joel Linscheid, um, who's teaching at Augustana College, he was at our gig in the Quad Cities, and we got to talking a little bit, and he's a great tenor player, and so... He's going to fill in Nolan's spot for this, this upcoming concert, um, which will be really fun. The trombone section is Anthony Williams, my colleague here at UNI, uh, the recently retired Rich Med, um, Joel Nagel from Cedar Rapids, and Zach Morton from the Quad Cities is on, on bass bone. Lead trumpeter is Corey Schmidt, who uh, was driving all the way from Forest City to play with the band, but now is much closer to where all of us are. He's living in Iowa City doing a, a doctorate at the University of Iowa in conducting. Uh, so he won't have quite as far to drive, especially for this gig at the James Theater. It'll be right around the corner for him. Uh, Dave Rezik, as I mentioned, Steve Wheeler, and John Eilabuni normally plays with the group, but um, we've got a sub for him this time too. Really excited to kind of introduce Iowa to this guy, Adrian Ruiz, who's uh, from Austin, Texas. Uh, and I got to meet Adrian this summer. I presented some of this music, the Fertile Soil Suite, which we've talked about before, and you've played on, on KCCK. Uh, I was presenting that music at, at a conference in Austin, the International Society of Jazz Composers and Arrangers. And Adrian was in the band that played one of the pieces that was uh, 
showcased on the, the concert of award winners called the Sonic Awards. So he played my piece Flyover and we got to talking afterwards and he ended up taking a job at Simpson College. So uh, it just so happened he was gonna be around and, and we needed to fill a trumpet spot. And uh, he's an amazingly sweet guy and a really great musician. So I think, think people are gonna be really excited uh, when they hear him play. And, and we've got yet another uh, outstanding jazz musician who decided to make his home in Iowa. So that's pretty cool. And then finally, the rhythm section is uh, Christopher's very happy band plus Steve Grismore. So we got me. <laughs> there you go. Who's also uh, generally very happy uh, to be playing this music. Me, Drew Morton, Dave Teedy, and Grizz. Now, you mentioned that you had a chance to uh, uh, showcase the Fertile Soil Suite at this, uh, at this conference. And that had to be, from a professional point of view, that had to be a real high point moment for you. Yeah, it was pretty exciting. I mean, and it's like basically the best audience you could ask for because it's a room full of jazz composers who, you know, this is what they love. So, uh, you know, they're, they're supportive. They understand how hard it is <laughs> to, to write music for, for these types of ensembles. And they, um, they're, they're kind of rooting you, rooting you on, you know, so I felt the love in there and felt the appreciation. And you feel like maybe some of those like nerdy little things that, um, your everyday listener might not get so excited about the people in that room. That's kind of like what they're there for. So, uh, so that was pretty cool. I got to follow that up with a, a blog post for is Jack, um, JC Sanford, who, uh, did his undergrad at university of Northern Iowa. He curates this series of educational blogs for is Jack and, uh, asked me to write one about that music as well. So you go to a conference for networking and support and, if you're lucky, you get to show off your own work, of course, uh, but uh, also to kind of get inspired and think about things that are going to your own composing. So did that happen too? With, with music, that's a, you know, it's a little bit different than say when I go to a conference and come back with an idea for something to do during a pledge drive, you can't really come back and say, oh, I need, I'm going to use these changes in my next song, but I'm sure you did come away with some things that you thought, oh, I've, this gives me some ideas for my own composition. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, inspiration is a, a huge part of going to those things. For me, just hearing hearing other people's work, hearing people share the stuff that they've been doing, um, whether or not I'm taking anything directly from what they're doing, just like being excited about this craft and seeing other people who love it as much as I do um, and getting to hear performances from people like Miguel Zanon, uh, who also presented on some of the music that he wrote for saxophone and string quartet would just like blew me away some incredible music and then his quartet played one of the evening concerts uh, Jim McNeely presented a concert of his music with the same big band that played my piece the next day and um, yeah just you know one of those things if your tank is running a little low energy wise or kind of creativity wise that fills it right up it's the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra in concert at the James Theater in Iowa City, the new performance venue there that is uh, uh, really busy and really great space to hear music on uh, October 2nd. And what is start time, Mike? 7 p.m. start. And uh, there's some student tickets available for uh, if you've got a student ID, there's a discounted ticket price. Um, encourage you to get tickets in advance if you're interested, but you can get them on the day of as well. And we just want to try to fill that room with folks because this band only plays a handful of times a year. Um, so, you know, and this is our, the only time we've played in Iowa city. It'll be our last concert of the calendar year. Um, so get it while you can, you know, <laughs> try to come out and check it out. Right. Yep. It's uh, uh, we don't have that many opportunities to hear uh, big bands and jazz orchestras. And uh, this is really our only chance during the year to hear one that uh, is a uh, brand new original music by uh, by the people that we uh, that we know and love up and down the state. So, uh, again, October 2nd at the James Theater in Iowa City. It's I think the James dot com is their website if you'd like more information or to uh, get tickets does the jazz composers orchestra you do you have a place online or in social media where you uh people can find out more about the band yeah there's a website that's just the name of the band.com so it's iowa jazz composers orchestra.com uh to see where we're playing and kind of 
there's some recordings up there and stuff you can check out. Um, and then I maintain a Facebook page for the band. Um, you know, I gotta, I gotta get hip to the other social media platforms, but right now it's only Facebook uh, for the group and share videos of the band there and other stuff uh, like, you know, gigs and whatnot. Yeah, the Iowa Jazz Composers Orchestra TikTok can't be far away, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, I would need someone to run it for me. I'm a little, <laughs> I'm a little old school, um, but yes, we, we should probably make that happen. <laughs> uh, again, October 2nd at the uh, James Theater in Iowa City. Uh, Mike, always a pleasure to talk to you. Looking forward to, to this gig, of course, because like you say, this band only plays a handful of times during the year, and this is uh, for this area of the state, the only chance to hear it. And uh, hope you have a good crowd and good luck with it. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. Thanks for everything you continue to do for this music and for our, our community. That's what we do. Uh, thanks, Mike. You can hear the Culture Crawl live on the radio many weekdays at 1020 or download the podcast, watch or listen on your own schedule at kcck.org slash culture or however you get your podcasts. I'm Dennis Green, and I'll talk to you later.